So, all right, now let's introduce our featured speaker, Dr. Bob Fry. Now he goes by Dr. Bob. So uh, Dr. Bob's a dynamic and highly respected proposal professional with 35 years of accomplishments. He often speaks at APMP and PMI uh, events. He's a fellow with APMP and there aren't that many fellows. It's a really a, a, a rare distinction. Uh, Dr. Bob's has helped his customers win more than almost $8 billion worth of contract awards. Uh, which included uh, Bob's help on, I think, three multi-billion dollar uh, competitions. And so two of those were for NASA and one was with the Department of Energy. He's authored a very successful book. It's called Successful Proposal Strategies for Small Businesses. I actually have it in my library. And he's coming out, I think, with a new version next year, which is titled Successful Proposal Strategies on the Go. So I'm dying to hear all about that. So let's hear from Dr. Bob. Welcome. Thank you so much. Can you see my screen? Not yet. All right. And yes, we can. Perfect. OK. Uh, thank you, AJ. I really appreciate this opportunity to share a bit about my professional background and interests with the SMA family. I've been engaged in proposal development for 35 years. My friend, colleague, and co-teacher, Dr. Terry Tarbell, nominated me to be an APMP fellow. I received that honor at the APMP ceremony in New Orleans in 2006. That was the year following Hurricane Katrina. <laughs> Looking down from my hotel room, I distinctly remember seeing debris on the roofs of the buildings nearby. The collage of images here on my opening slide gives you some insight into my passions outside of business. First is photography of nature and sports, for example. I particularly enjoy helipotography from three or 4,000 feet in the air. I've had the good fortune to have sold more than 2,000 of my images, both editorially and commercially through a stock photo website. Here a great white egret launches into flight in the Chincoteague National Wildlife Refuge in coastal Virginia. The gold glove on the left belonged to the late great Hank Aaron, a National League All-Star for 20 seasons. I took this image at the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York, the same year that the Washington Nationals won the World Series. My second passion is woodworking most recently wood turning. I taught myself how to turn wooden projects using chisels on my lathe at home. The image in the lower right corner is of a small lidded cup that I handcrafted from gluing together six very dense exotic hardwoods. Hmm. The two men standing on either side of me here were instrumental in my growth and development as a proposal professional. On the right side of the slide is Mr. Moffat Tharp, former Vice President of Strategic Planning and Business Development at EER Systems in McLean, Virginia. EER was purchased by L3 in 2001. It had been serving as a technical writer and editor in support of a contract that EER had held at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center Several months before Moffat launched the Strategic Planning and Business Development Group in 1987, I volunteered to go to McLean from Columbia, Maryland, where I was living at the time, for a finite amount of time to work with him in support of a $92 million NASA proposal for engineering support services. At that stage, I didn't know the difference between a red team and a red light, <laughs> but I loved the process the time pressures, and that feeling of being squarely in the breach. I recall sleeping on the floor in the office for several nights. Ultimately, the proposal was a winner, and I was a proposal convert. I petitioned Moffat to join his newly formed group, and he accepted. We were in a brand new building, and I was given carte blanche to build my proposal team from the ground up equip them with computer resources, and formulate repeatable proposal processes. 
I conducted multiple computer and printing related trade studies by going in person to many vendors in and around Washington, DC. This was the era of the Macintosh Plus computer with a nine inch monochrome monitor. Moffat was a huge proponent of proposal graphics and this was state of the art. We networked the Mac and IBM compatible PCs. At that time, those devices had one megabyte of random access me memory or RAM and had a slot for a five and a quarter floppy disk. My laptop today has eight gigabytes of RAM and seven terabytes uh, on its ex external hard drive. How things have changed. So 12 years later, Ron Trowbridge, shown standing on the left of this slide, interviewed me to serve as proposal director of a fledgling minority owned 8A IT services company in McLean, Virginia. When I started there, the company had $15.5 million in revenue and 140 staff. Over time, I was promoted to senior vice president of knowledge management and proposal development. Notice which one was listed first. When I left nine years later to form my own proposal consultancy, the company had $364 million in revenues and 1,964 people. Now that growth did not involve any acquisitions. Instead, we had a nine year sustained proposal win rate of 66%. That rate was validated six ways from Sunday by bankers, accountants, and attorneys during the rigorous due diligence process conducted before the company was sold to Wiley, which later became part of KBR. From the time I started working on proposals, I was like a sponge in an effort to learn as much as I could about the federal acquisition process, government and industry terminology, and responsibilities across the proposal team, as well as effective writing styles and techniques, just to scratch the surface. I codified what I had learned on the job every chance I had. By the early 1990s, I had developed the manuscript for a proposal book. After shopping my manuscript with 32 potential publishers, our tech house incorporated in Boston and London tentatively accepted my manuscript pending a detailed technical review. The editor with whom I worked, a former vice president at Hughes Aircraft, stretched my thinking in demanding ways. I recall him circling a footnote in my manuscript and writing, great idea, Bob. Now expand this into a chapter. <laughs> so I did. In 1997, our tech house published the first edition of my book, Successful Proposal Strategies for Small Businesses, shown here in the upper right. Over the, over the years and based on sales, our tech house invited me to prepare five more editions. The sixth, most recent one with the US Capitol on the cover is 722 pages long. The Library of Congress stipulates that 30% new or revised materials must be included for a book to be called a new edition. Otherwise, it's just a reprint. By the way, I took the image of the Capitol Dome <laughs> on the book cover. Now, both of my parents had been teachers in their careers, so I presume that I came by my love of teaching somewhat naturally. During the past 25 years, I have conducted pr proposal and capture management training for more than 4,100 entrepreneurs, small and large business proposal staff, and government civil service, civil servants. On the left-hand side of this slide, I had just finished teaching a group of 30 government staff at NASA Langley Research Center in Hampton, Virginia. The topic was compelling proposal writing for announcement of opportunity and broad agency announcement responses. Training had been organized through the Business Development Office within Langley's Office of Strategic Analysis, Communications, and Business Development. By the way, one thing I've learned is that government folks don't know how to sell to other parts of government. They haven't been <laughs> trained to. And uh, 
nor should they be expected to. So they certainly welcomed the training. I had developed the hand-drawn diagram in the center of this slide to show 15 scientists from NASA Ames Research Center in California to present their research within a larger context to include the NASA strategic plan. My seminar was entitled, Increasing the Probability of Gaining Funding for Your Work. Hmm. For me, working closely with a team of diverse people, both as a group and individually, to confidently present technical, management, past performance and scenario-based information to government evaluators is very rewarding. It's gratifying to see how each presenter matures and the team as a whole gels. Having the individuals peak at the right time and at the same time is a challenge that I very much enjoy addressing and surmounting. Now the COVID-19 pandemic presented logistical hurdles for me as an orals coach ensuring a common screen background, controlling household noises, preventing people from talking over each other and conveying a sense of the presenters being an integrated team stood among the hurdles. But it was doable and also successful. In 2017, I had the opportunity to support a group of very accomplished astronomers, senior scientists, operations experts, engineers, test pilots, and managers at NASA Ames Research Center in Mountain View, California. The focus was on the senior review proposal to assess the science return on investment for the Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy called SOFIA. The aircraft is shown in the lower left. SOFIA is a highly modified 747 SP aircraft. The joint NASA and German Center for Aeronautics and Space Science asset flew 99% above the Earth's atmosphere with sophisticated telescopes and other instruments on board to study infrared astrophysics. The illustration on the right shows the 21 major NASA proposal wins in which I have participated during my career thus far. To be sure, I have su supported a broad cross-section of civilian defense and intelligence community proposal efforts while winning, including winning a billion dollar Department of Energy proposal that was a joint government industry partnership. However, my primary affinity is for NASA proposals as a proposal strategist, architect, writer, reviewer, and orals coach. Before I close, I wanted to recognize the efforts of Melissa Miller and Heather Kirkpatrick in helping me become acclimated to SMA. Really appreciate your guidance and your advocacy. Thank you so much. Back to you, AJ. Great. Thank, thank you, Dr. Bob. What a fascinating story. Thank you for sharing your insights and, and a bit about your personal journey and, into proposals. I think every one of us has our own personal journey in terms of how we ended up into this really unique profession. Really love the fact how much you, you talked about enjoying actually teaching uh, the government customer actually in terms of getting their own funding <laughs> from other government agencies you're so right there i think i even took the opportunity to kind of zoom in on that one uh that one uh, slide that you helped them create and it was uh, fascinating so thank you so much dr bob that was wonderful and a shout out thank you for the shout outs to to melissa and to heather and now i'm gonna do a shout out to all of our sales teams and lead customer relationship managers remember we've got a nasa competition coming up who are you going to call first Dr. Bob, right? All right. So thank you so much, um, Dr. Bob. And uh, welcome, welcome to the SMA family. Thanks for uh, sharing thank you. a bit about your, your personal life and your career and your interests. And uh, I think we're going to probably look forward to perhaps uh, hearing from you next year about your wood carving. That's, uh, we always like to share. Every one of us has a personal hobby. Or, and it's quite interesting in terms of sharing kind of our personal hobbies with each other. I think um, everyone's always kind of found that as a fun part of our town halls. So, all right, um, Nicole is here with us too. Yeah, Great. Hi. Thank you so much, AJ and Dr. Bob. Well, we'll definitely have you back in 2023 so we can learn about your expertise on woodworking.